Change often happens in your life when you least expect it. Sometimes someone passes away and we feel like, man, life is too short, I have to start working on these goals. Or when my girlfriend broke up with me because she said I was too childish. That heartbreak is what led me to snap out of it and grow up. Maybe you're overweight and something inside of you is screaming out that it's time to change. Have you ever wanted to change so bad but couldn't? Have you tried and failed and tried and failed? Are you sick of trying to change bad habits only to come up short and doing the same shit you've always been doing? Well today I'm going to give you the 7 steps for creating lasting change by Tony Robbins, which teaches how to influence and persuade people to change. The Basics of Changing People Tony Robbins says that to change someone, you need a solid relationship first, which is based out of two things. No judgment. Never judge the person you want to help. Be open to whatever they have to say without putting any label on it. Number two, respect and care. Look for something you can respect about someone and care about them. Theodore Roosevelt said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. To be happy, match life conditions with blueprint. Tony Robbins says that if your life conditions don't match your blueprint, then you're unhappy. To help someone, you must either change their living condition or change their blueprint. Life conditions plus blueprint equals happy. Pretty simple, right? So how do we do this? Step 1. Understand and appreciate their world. This first step to creating lasting change is the most important and most critical for change to occur in yours or anyone's life. To influence yourself or anybody else, you must first know what influences them and what human needs they or you are trying to fulfill. Each of us try to fill all the human needs. However, there are two preferred higher than all others. Number one, certainty. You need to know you can avoid pain and gain pleasure. Number two, uncertainty or variety. You need change in your life, new experiences. Number three, significance. The feeling of importance and being needed. Number four, love and connection. A feeling of closeness or union with somebody or something. Number five, growth. The expansion of knowledge, skill, wealth, capacity, or capability. Number six, contribution. This means helping, giving, or supporting others. For example, we all want variety in our lives. However, some of us prefer to have a sense of security and certainty in our lives that bills will be paid. This is a part of the seven elements of guiding force in the program, where we learn about global belief systems, our identities, our values, rules, and vehicles. We can learn everything we need to know about somebody by asking questions and understanding what needs they are trying to match. For example, ask these questions and think about the answers you get. What needs are being matched? So if you ask somebody, what is life about? And for example, they say, being with family and enjoying life. This means the needs being met is love and connection. What is freedom for you? An example of this is the love of traveling and being in multiple locations. The need being met being variety. Who are you really? Someone that helps and cares for others. The need being met here is contribution. Who are you at work? I'm the leader. The need here, significance. Once we know the two human needs someone is trying to match more than the others, we can go to step two. Step two, get leverage. Tony Robbins says that leverage happens when your brain and body becomes one and you go, this is it, no more. When you hit an emotional threshold, when failing to change is far more painful than all the other options. Leverage must be immediate. Immediate pleasure for changing now and immediate pain for not changing now. People don't change because the habit fills some of their needs. For example, smoking makes you feel comfortable. It changes your state. It creates variety. You connect with others and other smokers. But if your health becomes too critical or if someone you love deeply hates cigarettes, now you start to get leverage. So how do you know what's leverage? Well, you try different things. And if you know what their two biggest needs are, then you know what to look for. Sometimes the trigger can be physical. An example of stopping smoking by giving pain every time someone tries to light a cigarette. Tell your buddy every time you smoke, I get to slap you in the face. Or every time you smoke, you have to give me $20. You can easily change someone with that kind of leverage. 
How to use framing. Tony Robbins says that to change someone's behavior, you change people's state. If you leave them where they are, they stay stuck in a negative state and won't budge. And you do that through physiology and focus. Focus is what they focus on and what it means for them. Ask questions whenever possible and tell stories so they get in a bit of a trance. If I tell you something and we have great rapport, maybe you'll listen. But if I ask you, what do you think this might mean in this context? Then I make you come up with your own resources and you can't deny your own experiences. There are three types of framing. Number one, pre-framing. Tony Robbins says to tell someone in advance what to pay attention to and what it means. It's the most powerful way to change someone. The pre-framing works like a placebo effect. An example of this is, what I'm gonna do right now is the most powerful pattern ever. There wasn't one person who didn't heal. You'll love this one. If you're with the type of people who are skeptical immediately, say that you know what they're thinking. Sort of like, you know what? I don't know if this really makes sense. It probably doesn't, but why don't we give it a try? Which will immediately build rapport. Or maybe say, I know you have a certain way of doing things, but try mine out, and if it doesn't work, that's okay, you can go back to your old way. Number two, reframing. Tony Robbins says that preframing happens when someone has a problem and you change what it means to get them to see it in a different way. So let's say your friend complains about the dates he's been going on and that every time he goes on a date, it's a complete failure. Then you might say something like, well, maybe God is protecting you from these men because he has someone special lined up for you. Number three, deframing. Deframing is when someone is caught up in something and you destroy their frame of reference. For example, it's like me complaining that I have to get glasses now and that I'm scared I'm going to look like a dork. And then my sister's war veteran boyfriend coming up to me and saying, well, at least you can see. I can only see shapes and outlines through one eye. Shout out to him, by the way. I don't have glasses, but I am truly grateful for my eyes. After having conversations with my sister's boyfriend and how his life was like being blind after serving for our country. Another example of this is like the child who's complaining about eating their food. And you say, you know, there are a lot of children in the world who are starving and would love to have that piece of food. Step three, interrupt the pattern. This third step is the first where we begin to break the disempowering patterns. All change is just in pattern. So we must interrupt the pattern you or the other person is in. Make the interrupt as shocking as possible. And the person will then be in a position to listen and absorb new information. There are a number of ways to do this, which is explained very well in the program, but below are just some examples of it. Ideally, you want to interrupt the pattern ASAP. Kill the monster when it's small and before it's ingrained in their system. Any pattern which is continually broken will eventually be changed. You can break the pattern physically, like throwing cold water or slapping them. Take them into a more positive future, change the language pattern. For example, next time you feel depressed, Say, thank God I'm not living homeless in Asia and repeat that 20 times a day. I think the first one's a little bit easier though. And maybe slapping can be a little bit funner. My opinion, of course. Step four, define the problem in solvable terms. Somebody says they're depressed. No, they're not depressed. They're just bored. They're living life under someone else's terms. You redefine their situation in a way which is addressable. For example, the man who wanted to kill his wife and children. Bob wanted to kill his wife and children. Tony asks him, what's a good life for him? And then tells him he's trying to be something he's not. Tony tells him to fuck that idea of being a responsible father, which is shackling him. He says there's no point in waiting for something. He can go back to living the life he dreamed right now and improve the life of people around him by being a better person. He says everyone loves a comeback. It's boring having a great time all the time. But the person who makes a comeback and gets even stronger that's what everyone loves. He tells him he's a man who likes to ride and boogie. So tell him to close his eyes and imagine how it feels to get up, give a kiss to his kids, get on that Harley on the freeway and feel the wind on his face. Then he goes home, grabs his wife and makes the most passionate love he's ever done. As he speaks, Bob has the biggest grin on his face. He plays Born to be Wild and now he's moving, dancing and singing. Step five, create new empowering alternatives. Tony Robbins says that the key is to find out what vehicles people use to meet their needs. Once you know, you must set a new empowering alternative. People need a new way of thinking, of focusing, a new physiology, 
new belief, new emotions. Any behavior, thought, or belief that gets reinforced constantly will become automatic. Be on the watch for someone's words. And to change associated pain with the current behavior and associate pleasure with the new behavior. So for example, I'm on NoFap Day 20, meaning I've given up porn, masturbation, orgasm for those who don't know what NoFap is. I might say instead of jerking off, which made me lazy, anxious, and unproductive, I now use that extra time and energy to work on my side business, and I'm getting closer and closer to financial freedom. Step six, condition it. You must condition it daily. Anchor it in the new way of life. This step is a very important part of the process as we begin to embed it into ourselves or others. When you are in an intense state, you will link to anything unique that is happening consistently at the time. There are many types of anchors, such as touch, sound, smell, and visuals. One of the best conditioning techniques that have helped me is visualization. I find it so powerful to condition yourself envisioning the new future you're working towards. In the program, Tony shares incantations, which are when you're fully engaged with your entire nervous system, with the full force of your focus, and you speak out loud an empowering phrase. A couple examples are, every day in every way, I'm getting stronger and stronger, or all I need is within me now. Step seven, create an empowering environment. To make the change lasting for the long term, you must create the environment that supports your change. Tony goes through different things you can do, such as removing any temptation in your household, for example. If you're struggling with junk food, get it out of the house and don't be tempted to buy it again. For me, what usually brings me down or triggers porn is social media. So I limit my usage or log out, so it's harder and harder to log into my account. One of the major techniques here, though, is peer groups. I'm a huge fan of masterminds. Being involved in a mastermind or having an accountability buddy can help you stay on track with your new way of life. So just to review, step one, understand and appreciate their world. Before you can influence yourself or others, you must learn what influences yourself or them. Step two, get leverage. Before you change or get a person to change, you must first find the leverage that will impact them. Step three, interrupt the pattern. Before you change a habit, you must first interrupt the pattern of our daily lives. Step four, define the problem in solvable terms. The problem of doing something that is not empowering, you must first be able to define in a way which allows you to see it as solvable. Step five, create empowering alternatives. You can't just stop a habit. It must be replaced with something else, but you must be careful what you change it with. Make it empowering. Step six, condition it. Once you have made, created, and started an empowering alternative, you must condition it to prevent you from turning back to your older ways. Step seven, create an empowering environment. Then to finally create lasting change, you must look at your environment and make it support your new empowering way of life. And that's all for today. I hope this helped. If you got value from this video, like it. And if you have any interesting comments, comment down below. And if you want more videos like this, subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you did feel like supporting the channel in a huge way, there is a link down below to buy me a coffee, which I would love because that's the fuel I use for these late night videos working on content for you. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Let's continue to move in silence.